Hey everybody, Mean Dean here, back at you. Uh, just a quick little video today. Uh, we had some very sad news in the world of wine today. The legendary Stephen Spurrier passed away earlier today. At his home in England at the age of 79. Uh, I suspect most of you watching this love wine enough to know who Stephen Spurrier is. Because uh, he was a giant. Um, the 1976 Judgment in Paris that he organized. If you don't know what that is, uh, California wine was not exactly well regarded in the world back in 1976. In fact, it was pretty much a laughing stock, especially in France. And of course, the wine world kind of revolves around France, at least it does in France. Um, he came over here, he tasted some wines, he took some back home, and he organized this blind tasting. Eleven judges, including himself, I think one American and nine French judges. Uh, a whole bunch of Napa Valley wine, some whites against some uh, French Burgundies, and some reds against some uh, red Cabernet Sauvignons against French Bordeaux. Um, the expectation being that France would clobber them, they did not. Uh, California won both categories. The red wine, uh, Stag's Leap Wine Cellars, 1973, was the winner. This was up against some first growth Bordeaux. Uh, uh, Chateau Aubriand, Chateau uh, Mouton Rothschild, uh, Chateau Montrose, which is the one that I have uh, a few bottles of in my cellar, not 73. Um, these are heavy hitters in the wine in the wine industry, and, and Stag Sleep wine cellars beat them all. Quite a shock, put it mildly. In the white wine category, all kinds of uh, um, well known Burgundies, including. Uh, 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 Joseph Durand and lots of other Burgundies from uh, Montrachet area, some of the most expensive wines in the world, were beaten by Chateau Montalena from Napa Valley. If you've ever seen the movie Bottle Shock, you want to know a little more about it, um, it's, uh, it's a really entertaining movie. It's not all that accurate. In fact, Spurrier was not particularly a huge fan of, uh, I think he said it was not much, <laughs> not more than one word that was true. It's a Hollywood movie. It's not a documentary, right? But it's uh, but it is a good film, and it will tell you if you don't know anything about it. It will go through the process, and it's it's good, entertaining. Chris Pine and uh, Bill Pullman, Bill uh, a lot of a lot of good stars in it. It's a good film. Alan Rickman plays Steven Spurrier, actually the late great Alan Rickman. Uh, so you know, you get to thinking if that doesn't happen, if the, if the judgment in Paris doesn't happen, what does the Napa Valley wine industry look like right now? I have no idea. Not like it, it doesn't look like it is now. Um, does California eventually get some the same kind of respect it has? Yeah, maybe. But it would have been much, much later. Which would have been a lot of the money that was put into it would have been much, much later. And so maybe Napa still exists, but maybe it's twenty years behind. If Napa doesn't is twenty years behind, or 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 maybe even more, what does that mean for the rest of the Pacific Northwest? It, Washington State, do they find their wine game 20 years later? Oregon? British Columbia, where, I'm, where I am. Do we have an in, a wine industry here? We probably do. Is it any good? Who knows? Um, there's really no way to know that. But the only thing we can speculate is, without the judgment in Paris, it's probably not what it is today. Uh, so, and I looked in my fridges here, I was hoping to find some wine from Stag's Leap or Chateau Montalene or even any of the other wines that, uh, wineries that took place in the Judgment in Paris, I didn't. So I just opened up the oldest Napa Cab I could find in there, a little 2010 Napa Valley Cabernet from Silver Oak. Uh, oh, that's, uh, there's a lot of fruit there still. Mmm, nice. Let's see, oh, it's definitely, got, it's getting a lot of orange-brown towards the rim there. That's a, it's clearly a 10-year-old wine. Mmm. Not a lot of funk though. It hasn't. It hasn't really turned to the forest floor mushroomy. I've only, I've only been to Canada for about twenty minutes, half an hour. So, so that'll be going to change as the evening goes on. But I thought appropriate. We'd have have to have a nice bottle of California Cab tonight. I'd be drinking tonight if uh, Stevens Spurrier didn't do the Judgment in Paris. I don't know. That's a nice wine. It's, uh, it's, I think it's fading a bit, which is actually a bit of a surprise. These California cabs usually go a lot longer. We'll see. I'm sure it'll get better as it opens. It's, not, it's, it's good now, but it'll, it'll get better. 
but this is silver oak, so one of those producers that really uses a lot of oak, and they tend to tend to be big, bold wines, which I, I enjoy. I enjoy all kinds of Napa Cabs. This is one that, it's kind of polarizing, a lot of people wouldn't like this at all. Um, it's kind of the old school Napa Cabs, there was a time there. 90s, I think it was even before I was really into wine that where a lot of Napa cabs went to this bigger, riper, fuller style, and it kind of fell out of favor a little bit. Um, but some wineries like these guys came to still do that kind of style. They're very uh, distinctive and very. It's kind of easy to recognize that you're drinking a big Napa cab. Mm. Yeah, it's got. A, oh, that's nice. It's got a little bit of, a little bit of black fruit, uh, some red cherry, bit of red cherry. There's uh, it's almost a little a tiny bit of smoke on the on the palate there. Twenty ten, eh? I've been right on the okay. Twenty ten. Oh, that's nice. Long finish. It's still finishing. Yeah, it's nice to pair with a steak or something and just get a drink, sit on the patio and drink it for the next couple of hours. But, mm, blackberry, tobacco, a little bit of uh, like uh, charred earth coming through now a little bit. Still finishes really long. Nice. Anyway, so the point of this video, not only to taste a nice wine, was to say thank you to Mr. Spurrier. Because who knows what we'd be drinking without him. I don't think it's I don't think it's hyperbole to say that he was one of the most influential influential wine people, especially for California and Pacific Northwest, maybe in the history of wine. And of course, he's very influential, and he uh, he started the Academy du Vin, which was I think the, I believe the very first wine school in France, um, and he had a store in it. But he's been he's a giant, an absolute giant, and he's getting very missed. And I've you know seen some of the tributes on Twitter. I never got a chance to meet him, unfortunately, uh, but I know some people here that do, and they and lots of people, of course, have just come up with these tributes about what a wonderful, nice man he was. He was always very supportive uh, to people, even people who had very little wine knowledge. Um, and he was here. He's been in, he's been in BC several times. He was here uh, just over a year ago. Uh, there, was, there was an event at uh, somewhere in Vancouver. In, I think it was November twenty nineteen. So a year, not even a year and a half ago, really. Um, uh, and I've seen pictures of it on Twitter too. So uh, he he was tasting. I think they called it the Judgment of Vancouver. I'm not sure if that was the official name of the event or that was just some hashtag. But um, but he was very supportive of the DC wine industry. So. Um, I know that uh, our, our friend John Skinner from Painted Rock met him several times, and, and Stephen was here um, tasting some of his wines and some other stuff too uh, on multiple occasions. And uh, tributes are pouring in from Jancis Robinson and just about every, I mean, everybody in the wine world is talking about it. Um, the last few years, Stephen had been uh, had been making wine. He he bought bought some vineyards, I guess, and he was making sparkling wine in England. Um, Bella, I think maybe the name of that Cooper on with that applica. Um, and from my own accounts, he was out there in the vineyard just a few days ago, tending them. So, um, it's a big loss for the wine world. So, Stephen, this is for you. You'll be missed. And hopefully I'll get to meet you on the other side one day. Thank you very much for all you did. Cheers. Mm. That's good. So wherever you are tonight, raise a glass in honor of Stephen's career. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.